What's going on everybody and welcome to a video series that might have me more excited than any other series before. Uh, mostly because I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> uh, I know some of the things that are possible, but I don't know everything and it's going to be a lot of stuff that I have to learn and hopefully we can uh, learn together. So what I've got here is the open BCI. I think what I've got is the starter kit. I could be mistaken, we'll break it down in a second, but basically the idea is so you can read EEG data from your head. Uh, think Neuralink just without needing this machine to embed electrodes into your brain. It just sits right on top, non-invasive, and you can read brain waves. Uh, I believe also in here we've got things for ECG and EMG, like reading uh, muscular movements and stuff like that. Mostly I'm interested in the EEG stuff, but honestly, I'm, I'm just super psyched about checking out all of this technology. So uh, let's dive in. So inside the box, we've got, of course, some electrodes. I think these are just for use with conductive paste, though. Then we get the actual conductive paste some electrode wiring. They also sent me their headband kit. If you're looking for a cheaper entry into EEG data, this is probably your best bet sticker. Next, we get the battery pack, the Cyton board, and the Daisy board. The battery is for headset power, though we're gonna wind up using something else. The Cyton board is eight channels, and then the Daisy board gives us the other eight channels for 16 total. So now for the main act of the show, we have the Ultra Cortex Mark IV headset, unassembled, but 3D printed to pretty good perfection here. Each octagon is a spot for an electrode, and the unit basically just rests on your head. Headset electrodes, jumper wires for them, inserts for the headset electrodes, and then the last of my electrodes. Oh, and also some ear clips. And that's it. Now we're ready to actually assemble the headset. So the official guide's simple enough. They've got a video and a text write-up, lots of photos. It's pretty useful. Uh, the kit overall is pretty expensive. You can go down from 16 channels to 8 to save some money, or just go with the headband kit that I referenced before for 200 There's also, like, toys on the market with EEG, like, you know, to control cars, you can convert those maybe for 50 bucks. You could even try to source parts on your own and build everything from scratch. I estimated I could do it somewhere between 10 and 20 dollars per electrode circuit and maybe even go lower, but it's just the quality was going to be an issue. Plus, the whole I really don't know what I'm doing part. So, the only issue is with this battery. As you can see here, uh, this is if you have a standalone battery, it can kind of go in real nice and clean there, but the battery doesn't come with the headset, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, maybe for shipping reasons. So, they give you instead a battery pack, and this is it. It's just taped to the top. <laughs> um, that's not acceptable. So. <laughs> So, OpenBCI does link to a battery from Adafruit, but it's sold out. So, luckily, you can buy these little lipos like all over the place. Um, I, I even have a few lying around for small drones. So, which brings me to my next problem, and here you see two identical plugs. One is the battery pack that they sent me, and one is my lipo battery. Notice anything catastrophic? How about now? <laughs> I'm no electronics expert, but I think rule number one is don't reverse polarity. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if there's some stand standard somewhere for these plugs, but if there is, someone messed up, we need to f uh, flip the LiPo plug, like the LiPo battery plug, because these plugs can only go in one way, you know, so people don't reverse polarity. <laughs> to do this, you just have to lift up on some small tabs. Usually people use like a screwdriver, but I actually uh, just stuff a small thing in, like an Allen wrench where the wire goes, and that'll do the trick to pull it out. Long story short, always double check the polarities before you connect things. This could have ended in tears. Even though the Adafruit battery was sold out, I did look at the pictures, and it looks like the plug was indeed opposite from mine. Really weird. I've got multiple brands of these batteries and another brand charger, uh, all of which are the opposite of this headset's board and the Adafruit battery. But anyway, once you've got everything together, you can use this little plug here, and it's just a Bluetooth dongle. They've got Mac, Linux, and Windows support for their GUI uh, that you can just download. Once you got that, go ahead and open the GUI. You pick various settings, like which board you're going to use, how many channels, and then make sure uh, that you can actually make a connection to the headset. So obviously make sure the headset is, you know, turned on. 
Once that's done, go ahead and put on the headset and clip on the ear clips. You might find the headset to be slightly uncomfortable. You just need to elect, uh, adjust the electrodes in and out. So if you go too far in, it might hurt uh, or lift up other electrodes. Uh, and then too far out, you won't get any signal from the ones that are too far out. If all goes well, though, you should see something like this. All right, now that we simply could not get any more cool, what's next? So first of all, this GUI is really awesome as a programmer. I look at this and I am in total awe and envy, uh, but I don't know, we can't really do anything from here because one, I can't read EEG data. I don't know what I'm really looking at, but two, the hope is to do a brain computer interface, at least to the extent where I wanna do control. So something like controlling something in a video game, for example, is the first thing I wanna try. So to do that, we, we can either take one or two approaches, and that would be either some sort of rule-based approach, which is gonna require me to have some sort of industry knowledge, which I don't, <laughs> or two, a deep learning approach, which won't require anything of me really, except for coding some deep learning stuff. So that's the first step I wanna take. Now to take that step, I have to decide, one, how do we get that data? Two, what data do we get? So from quick research, um, I'm just gonna bring up a couple of things here just for vague understanding for everybody. If you just Google like brainwave chart, you'll find stuff like these charts, okay? So this explains what each of like the five major brain waves are and what they kind of uh, map to, I suppose. Um, so like delta waves, these are like 0.1 to four hertz. And if you don't know what hertz is, you can, dare I say, it's interchangeable with frame rate, <laughs> so FPS. And when I show you our code, there's going to be things that say FPS, mostly because we've copied and pasted the code that, because to measure the hertz or the sampling rate, it's the same code you would use to measure FPS. Um, it's not the same, and we'll talk about some of the various issues um, hopefully soon. But anyways, um, so delta waves, this is like, the, like we're not gonna control anything with delta waves. Theta waves, um, I don't think we're gonna control anything there either. So I, I think you could probably, you can tell if someone is like sleeping based on theta and delta waves or and if they're dreaming or not or something like that. Then with alpha waves, we could tell, I think, and again, feel free to correct me. I am not an expert. This is just me learning over time and what I think where I'm at at the time. So alpha waves, you could tell if someone is relaxed, what kind of state they're in, blah, blah, blah. Beta waves, this is your normal waking state, so information about that. And then gamma waves, motor functions, higher mental functions. Okay, so just from reading that, my very quick understanding is that we really need gamma and beta waves most likely. Somewhere in this range <clears throat> is what's gonna be most useful to an algorithm. Like if we're thinking, go left, go right, it's my expectation that we would need information on this level. And the way this works is the, the hertz, this is like a sampling rate. So if you took this information and you had like the raw data, so let's assume gamma waves, this is the raw data. So let's say this was, I don't know, 60 hertz. You could sample it to 30 hertz. So you could take a 60 hertz stream and sample it to 30, but you probably wouldn't want to do that. Let's say you went 60 to 12 hertz. This is what you got. And then you took 12 hertz and you, and well, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to go to 7.5. <laughs> but, but basically each of these is like a less granular sampling of that raw data uh, that is whatever the baseline is. So we have a couple of issues here. One is what it, what is the raw sampling rate that we can get from the headset? Because we need something pretty significant if we're going to get gamma waves. Like you probably would want um, hundreds multiples uh, to get gamma waves. So that's our first question. Um, and then how to resample. I'm pretty sure uh, we can use SciPy for sam resampling information. Um, but anyways, uh, that's the question. And now how do we get the data actually just in Python? So uh, to do that, it was actually super simple. You just go over to learn down here software. And basically there's kind of like two major packages. One is like Python or it's open, open BCI dash Python or pi open BCI for newbies. <laughs> um, like me, and as I was reading through here, I just kind of got eventually to this point where, boom, print the raw data. That's exactly what we want, right? 
So, um, so you have to install things. Where is it? Yeah, pip install NumPy, Pi Serial, blah, blah, blah. And then you can pip install the uh, PyOpenBCI. Um, but then all it takes is this code right here. So let me show you guys a quick example of that. <clears throat> so if I take this, copy, pasta. Also, I need to stop that data stream. I'm just going to close out of that so it's not interfering with our new connection that we want to make. And don't forget to save that. And let me run that. We'll say pi37 read from dot pi. Uh, oh, we have a couple issues here. So first of all, it can automatically find the connection. You also could go into your device manager to figure out exactly which COM port you're using, uh, but it can automatically find it. Also, Daisy is true. Um, so if you had a different board, you would import something different here, but I have the Cyton board and I've got the Daisy. So the Daisy is that extra eight channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And let me run that one more time. Hopefully that works. Cool, looks like it's gonna come in. And let me make this big screen. Boom, there's our data, beautiful. I couldn't believe how simple that was. So thank you to the people at OpenBCI. That was really easy. <laughs> so so uh, what you see here is just a bunch of arrays and each element in the array is a separate channel. So a separate channel is a separate electrode on the head. So uh, this is channel one, two, three, four, five, and so on, all the way to 16. So pretty cool. The only thing that uh, you can even see here is it appears that this is not a steady stream of data. This is a burst of data, which is very problematic. I don't know what's causing that. If Is it just the print? Like if I wasn't printing, would it still be bursting? I really don't know. Um, so that may or may not be an issue moving forward. But anyways, it's currently happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and break that and then what we need to know is, even though it is bursting, can we find out what our frame rate is? <clears throat> so that's the next thing. Uh, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this code and explain a couple of things, uh, just because I think a, probably a lot of people are just kind of following along for uh, the interest of what's going on here. So I am going to copy and come over here, pasta. And uh, let me just explain a couple of things here. Um, for the FPS counter, we are using a deck. If you don't know what a deck is, it's just a container that you can say, hey, I want this container to be 50. And as I add new elements beyond the 50th element, the new element gets added at the end. The oldest element gets popped out, really simple. But deck is not very fast. So instead, with the help of Daniel, he wrote a kind of a NumPy version of a deck. So basically it's this and then these two lines here. It just mimics what deck does. It just does it way faster. <laughs> so, um, so in this case, it's a sequence of 30,000. I'm gonna decrease that just for now. I don't actually, I think 30,000 was still quite fast. I don't think it actually made a difference, but anyway. Um, I'm trying to think here. So sequence, we're just populating that. And again, it sequence is going to have, in this case, a hundred samples of the, that 16 channel array that you just saw in the at console output. Uh, nothing more to explain other than this that's commented out. Basically I saved a couple of files because just trying to iterate over the code and like do some like R and D type stuff. I needed, I wanted to just have a, a way to mimic the headset without actually needing the headset on because every time you break the connection, uh, sometimes it can be hard to reconnect, stuff like that. I'm sure there's a nice way to like cleanly close, but like I said, I'm honestly like going through this lot almost live. It's not totally new. It's like some of this stuff I'm just going to write for you guys uh, before I hop on a video, but um, this is me learning as I go. So <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, did I save that? I can't remember. <clears throat> Yeah, so this will give us our frame right now. So as you can see, um, there's a couple of things going on here. I'm just gonna highlight to pause. Um, this number here appears to be the legit frame rate, but actually it's usually more like 105. Like sometimes on the initial connection and things are kind of slow and then, it, and then it finally gets more stable. So, oops, let me, uh, if I catch it at the right time, there we go. So as you can see, most of them are rating 106, 105. I believe that's the real sampling rate. So you would say the raw sampling, I think is 105 Hertz. But then towards the end, we get these much larger numbers. I've seen it be as high as 2000. 
I don't know if that's because of the bursting or what. I'm going to try to dig a little deeper, figure out what's going on, maybe ask the people at uh, BC, Open BCI, see if we can figure out, like, what, why is that happening? Because that's going to make resampling challenging, uh, but still very, very possible. Uh, you just have to resample based on the index of time. I, I think it's totally possible to do it. Um, I just need to know for sure that that's what's going on. So anyway, it's about 105 hertz. Now, this is a problem for a couple of reasons. One is since we're only getting 105 hertz, uh, going to our brain waves here, we're going to have a really hard time sampling to 30 hertz. Like, we can do it. It's going to be a stretch, but it's not going to be very, it's going to be, like, totally accurate. <laughs> so the other option, we could just keep it raw. Like, I, I think that's what I would do for, like, a gamma wave. I would just keep the signal raw. Uh, and then for the beta waves, I, I think you could take it and, you know, you can take 105 and downsample to like 20 hertz. That's probably fine. Um, and then everything else from there. But like I said, I'm pretty sure gamma and beta is going to give us the information that we need, you know, for control. Like if we're thinking left, thinking right, I think we're going to need somewhere in these range. Okay, so... Um, yeah, if I forgot to say it too, I, I'm pretty sure I can use SciPy for the actual resampling, but it really is going to depend on if this is seamless or not. I think it's in bursting. So the next thing is I just want to show um, a, a, an example because as you saw with the GUI, you know, that, that Fourier transform, that's nice because it contains all of the hertz. Like it contains the 10, 20, 30, and it went all the way up to 60, which has me curious. How are they getting 60 hertz? Because I don't think you could accurately resample 105 to 60 hertz. So that's another thing I'd like to ask is how are they doing that? Um, is it because they're probably not using Python? They're probably using a much lower level programming language. And it might be the case that in this case, we don't want to use Python. We want to use, you know, C++ or something like that. So for the, the actual raw data, and then once we convert it to a Fourier transform or convert it to the, you know, gamma and so on, um, yeah, you know, resamplings, then throw it into Python. So who knows? Okay, so now to uh, visualize what this data looks like over a much longer time frame, as well as at the, in the raw form and why we kind of sample at different rates, um, I'm going to just use the following code. So this code just reads from a file. That way I don't have to have the headset on all the time. Uh, and this just sort of mimics what it would do if it was reading from the headset at, let's say, 105 uh, frames per second or 105 hertz. So, um, cool. So what we're going to do is, I'm trying to think if there's anything here I really need to explain. It's just going to iterate over and then sleep for that time frame. Unfortunately, matplotlib can't plot at 105 frames per second anyways. Um, but I just want to visualize the data, and then we're just breaking after the first, uh, first one anyways. <clears throat> but... Uh, we can say here, like, how many seconds do we want to slice? Let's start with one second. Uh, and then we're going to just do channel eight. So this channel eight, in theory, like, so in Python, since we index from, like, zero onward, really channel eight would be, like, channel nine on the headset, but not that it matters at this stage. Uh, so anyways, uh, and then colon, comma, this just means basically, like, the sequence of data that we're working with, this here. This is an array of arrays. And those arrays are those channel samples that you would saw in the console before. So when we say colon comma eight, we're saying we want the eighth index of all of the arrays in whatever array we're indexing, uh, or we're referencing rather, and that would be new data. And new data is just a slice of data. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so basically we're just graphing channel eight. So if I run this, uh, we should see, yeah, here, so here's one second. So you can see there's like these big fluctuations here, but then it's kind of hard to see, but if we just kind of went through the mid, um, there's even like a little bit of fluctuation going on there. So like if we go and let's say we graph five seconds, uh, you can see it even a little more clearly here. We still have all those little fluctuations, but in general, there's also a more macro fluctuation going on here, right? That might not be perfect, but if you were to, you know, draw like a moving average or truly resample the data, um, you would have something like what my mouse is doing, right? It would just be in this middle region. So not only do we have like these like really granular waves, we've got a little more macro of a wave going on, this, this much larger motion that's happening. Then if we go even further out, let's say like 20 seconds, 
again, there's there it's getting a little messy, and this is why we want to sample down. But even as we go, like if we go based up, like kind of up here, I guess, you can kind of see, okay, there is some sort of like downward trend, it looks like right here, right? But again, if we were to continue to zoom in though, we'd see those familiar high granular, you know, bumps basically, or whatever you want to call those, where it's just these like zigzags. Um, and that's as granular as the data gets. So um, now if we, let's say we did 180. So um, what would that be, three minutes? So this is three minutes of that brainwave data on channel eight. Now you can see there's even some, some even grander thing is going on. Like we thought it was going down, but actually on the grand scale over three minutes is actually kind of going up. <laughs> so this is kind of why like we, we have like very, very macro and micro and why we might want to sample in between. Cause as you've seen, there's all, there's all kinds of different things. So inside this gigantic wave, we've got these smaller waves doing things. So there's, there's just a lot of information, um, you know, enclosed here. So it, that's kind of why we want to sample at different rates. One, just to better understand what's actually going on. But two, because at least science tells us um, that the more, more granular or the granularity, I suppose, or the sampling rate can inform you on different things. So this much larger uh, graph, I don't exactly know which one it is, but I would say this is probably one of our, you know, maybe a delta wave or a theta wave, right? Well, like this information is very grand information. You know, if someone was really educated, they probably could tell if you were sleeping or not, you know, <laughs> or dreaming in your sleep and so on. So anyway, um, cool. So that's just some basic intro to, you know, OpenBCI, getting this information in Python. Now to continue, I've got to learn about, you know, resampling this data. Can we fix the continuous nature of the data? Uh, what kind of neural network am I even going to try to use and so on lots of things to look forward to um, So definitely stay tuned um, With that I have the best job and it is thanks to channel members and my new channel members are Vigan Software, Cam, Thibaud, Peverelli, Jackam, Ramasrikanth, Paratham Singh, Senzo Zakao, Paju Kadiavar, and Ramesh Ragavan, thank you guys very much for your support and of course all of you channel members i really really appreciate the support you guys are amazing and uh i think that's it if you got questions comments suggestions corrections uh all that stuff feel free to leave them below honestly i'm really learning all kinds of new stuff here um so yeah so feel free to t chime in if you've got anything you want to say um okay so i will see you guys in the next video.